everyone, and welcome to Conversations with Anglicans. My name is Ayana James, and today I have the pleasure of chatting with Homa Mahomed, parishioner at All Saints in Newtown. Homa, welcome to Conversations with Anglicans. Hello, thank you. Good evening to all listening, and thank you, Ayana, for inviting me. Of course. Now, one of the reasons why I invited you to chat today is because uh, we would have interacted at well, saying the Bible study, right? And one of the things I've really been impressed by is the passion and the fervor that you speak about, the passion and fervor that you have for God. And just the way you speak about God is really, really inspiring to me. So I really want to find out about your journey, about how you got there, right? So let's jump straight into it, Homer. So share with us um, how Anglicanism um, impacted your upbringing. Right? What was it about growing up Anglicanism that led you to this fervor and passion for God? Right. It was a little bit uh, complex or diverse. All right. So first of all, I was not uh, confirmed at a young age because I was negligent, sleeping late, wanting to stay home and watch cartoons on a Sunday morning. And there came a period where my aunt um, almost wrote me off. And... Um, Another cousin of mine um, wanted me to come to church with them. They were from the fundamental Baptist faith and stuff like that. And I know in my mind that I didn't really want to join their faith, but I didn't have the heart to say no. So I just went along with formalities and so on. Went to the service and stuff like that. And I realized that it wasn't so much about the message of peace and love and transform transformation. And they were like finger pointing. So I searched within that period of worship over there. And I realized, no, this is not it. It's not for me. So because that now was the catalyst for me to go to my aunt with great fervor now to go and find my relationship with God and work out my salvation, as the scriptures say. And um, she was so pleased to do that. And that period came in 1990 where I was confirmed in the faith, my personal relationship um, at 19 or 20 years old. And over the period, and that period, the All Saints Youth Ministry was very vibrant. And I was very much a part of being um, a youth council and stuff like that. I didn't want to be a, a youth group president because there's too much people work or whatever. But I would counsel the youth, right? So I went to various, let's call it spiritual um, workout seminars from alpha to um being in prayer ministry and stuff like that bible study and so on and that is what formulated me um into having this great passion for christ so it was sort of like a, a push from another direction an antagonist right a protagonist whatever you want to say as well as having that foundation that was always um there for me and with that two elements coming together, it made me understand and appreciate the Anglican faith where it was based on scripture, tradition, and reason. You understand? So I, I got it, you know, and I was on fire for the Lord ever since, you know, and with that came some prices where sometimes your 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 walk was not very um popular because you were just excited about the Lord, basically. Right. Well, I, there, there are some things that you said there that I want to, I want to go, I want to dig a little deeper now. Yes. You know, you said that, that, you know, you realize that we are based um, on scripture and so forth. And you said you got it. What is it that you exactly got? What did you get? I, all right. I got the fact that the scripture says, um, worship God with all your mind, your heart, your soul, et cetera, et cetera. And our tradition does emphasize mind. Mind is where the intellect is. So that calls reasoning, right? It points towards reasoning, right? And then scripture, of course, is the holy writings. And you have to use your mind to discern back then the writings then inspired by men in, in diverse um, cultures and stuff like that. And the history of salvation. And then, of course, your heart where in terms of uh, going to prayer meetings, that will stir your soul and your heart. And the combination of the two is what 
God points to, your mind, your heart, and your soul. And that is what I realize I have with the Anglican tradition. It's not just blind faith. You understand? It's not following blindly. And as scripture says, I can't remember where exactly scripture, but it said, you have to work out your salvation with fear and trembling. So work out points to logic and reasoning. So it's not to be dismissed. And it's not one or the other, but the Anglican uh, community or way of faith is to embody all of it in a most, uh, sometimes we read too dispassionate way, but passion is relative. <laughs> wow, you worked out a lot and you got a lot Homer. That That is really fabulous. But, uh, you know, I, I'm pretty sure there must have been a, a, an aha moment. Like uh, my aha moment throughout this journey was I would have had the impression of God as this big stick God, as a God that punishes, you know, and you have to be perfect for this God to love you. And, you know, on this journey, you know, I, and my personal experiences, I realized, well, wait, no, that's not God. You know, and the, and the scriptures, you know, line up with that, that God loved me. I mean, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, right? He, he loved, and I, and I um, substitute the world for me, that God so loved me, right? So that's a realization that I came to, and it really has helped this journey, you know? So was there any moment like that for you where you were like, hey, Ding, 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 like ball moment. Well, you see, it's hard to pinpoint one because, as I say, my journey was gradual but constant, right? Um, so maybe I'll give a few. Um, I would say about my mid-20s. Mid-20s? No, no, actually no. It was in the 30s. I realized that I had a gifting, and that is to teach, teaches a broad um, uh, subject of, subject area. And I used to counsel friends and family alike. I would say things to them that was very fitting, very wise. And I said, wow, okay. So I said, okay, I'm aware of it. I never boast about it because I was still coming to terms with this ability that I have that people marvel at because I didn't go to um, any um, school of study and I don't have letters behind my name, right? So what happened is when I started attending um, prayer, prayer meeting and stuff like that, things began to unfold. And one person, I think they were praying with me and they recognized or they told me, they sort of prophesied that one of my Guess who was teaching? And it just confirmed what I was believing all along. And I'm saying, but wait a minute. This is a 40 right here in this part of the vineyard. I need to tell people this. I need to live this. Because we have been too stiff-lipped for far too long. That is our habit, generally. Not all of us. But I know that God works in a lot of our lives. But we don't have that habit of sharing testimony easily or frequently and that was one of the aha moments that god's spirit is in and amongst us and and that is omnipotent and omnipresent and that is where i sat to believe that i think that was one of the big uh, aha moments for me definitely when um i got confirmation in a different sense you know um okay. from that lady who um enlightened me and so on yeah. Well, I'm really glad to hear that, that you know what your, your gift is and that you're using one it. One of, yeah. Yes, well, one of, right? But all of one us of. have various gifts, huh? So yes, that's what I'm yes, yes, of yeah. course. Um, I know that at All Saints Parish, there's a, there's a group called Fishers of Men, right? And um, I really want to hear some more of that and how the Fishers of Men has um, impacted you and your journey with God. Wow. Well, thanks for asking that question. Right, so it's a, a, let's say, a very organic occurrence and ministry um, for men where um, I think it was inspired or led by the Bishop um, Canon Bookie at the time. He was Canon at the time, or Bishop Bookie. And I'm um, calling for men that literally fish for men, men of, of faith, to come together and discuss everything under the sun, 
safe spaces where you will not be judged, you know, and speak freely. And what uh, a platform that is because men over time and the practice of society, the tradition of society, men are supposed to be stoic and men are supposed to exhibit feelings and weaknesses and so on. And when you look at society, you're seeing a lot of crumbling of families, starting with the absence of male, the issues of male, because there's no outlet to speak about the issues that burns in, in, in the male uh, demographic. And with that in mind, we will join us. And so that, 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 that um, ministry is a ministry where there is no uh, fixed or set structure in terms of how we dress and who is in whatever positions of leadership and so on. No, it's more like a wrong table, Knights of the wrong table rather than a square table where you have leadership and, and structure and so on. No, it's not about that. It's about true humanity and humility and godliness. And I can tell you, Ayana, when we get together, it is amazing. It's so enthralling and electrifying. We go back to our families, our spaces, revived and refreshed and inspired. And also, we also give back to the community um, or the wider body um, in terms of um, the fishes of men are involved with different ministries, naturally sort of naturally but the thing is sometimes it is not recognized or understood because we are not uniform but we are there they have men who are doing 12 baskets ushering um what else um doing a little bit of layman work and stuff like that so you have them in diverse ministries or in the choir stuff like that but it's not necessarily recognized because people are custom with things being labeled and structured and organized but we are trying to show the other side of the faith, where it's organic and it is um, inviting and it's putting a spin on faith and how people see faith within our community. So it's a form of outreach too, as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wow, I like how you said that you go back to your families, you know, energize and so forth. And, and yes. I mean, that's that's good you know and that that's what's supposed to happen in these various ministries that you know you you gather you help you know the wider um parish body and you know yes yes you, you, you're yeah. building a, a little community there as well you know support not only supporting yourselves but supporting different ministries in the parish as well so correct 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 and of course script is in there too as well of course of course yeah um so you said that you uh, a teacher, all right? Yes. You said, that, sorry, that your gift is a, as a teacher and you have been assisting um, one of the Anglican secondary schools with Ari, right? Yeah. Um, what is that experience like and what are some of the questions or the issues that you find cropping up when you have these Ari classes? All right. Um, there is no uh, trend in questioning that they would offer towards me, but it is more like, it seemed like it was more like absorbing what was shared with the priest or myself assisting. So one of the things we used to do is do uh, quizzes and fill in the blanks and, and do puzzles and stuff like that. But there would be periods where we would discuss a little bit of comparative religion and how God is perceived and conceptualized through different faiths. Nothing too deep, but for them to understand noticeable differences and seeing the broadness and the universal the universality of God in that space. Because not everybody who is in that school was an Anglican. Yeah. So we have to sort of make it sort of universal. Certain tenants would point to the way of Christianity and maybe a little bit more specifically Anglo-Christianity. But it was so broad-based that everybody was involved and included. And they were sort of like, uh, it, it, it improved their, 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 
the interpersonal relationship in the class and their confidence in speaking. And um, the only thing that comes to mind to the question is why certain uh, seasons were celebrated in the church, for example, Eastern Christmas and so on. So we would give them a little background into that. So it was pointing more into the major festivals of, of um, uh, the Christians, basically. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, I hope that what you're doing is having an impact on the students in the school and, and help them on their journey to uh, whatever spirituality that they are working towards. I really hope that that is a successful ministry at the school. Yes, I, I hope so. That's what mm -hmm. yeah. Right. So you are also a personal trainer. So I guess you are teaching people how to keep fit, how to eat well you know, how to maintain your body, because as we know, you know, our body is a temple, yes. right? Yes. Um, where did this, uh, how did you fall into being a personal trainer? Where, how did that happen? All right, first of all, let me correct you. I'm not a personal trainer. I don't want to misrepresent myself. I am a trainer, but okay. I train people personally and I do small group trainings. So, okay. yeah. Okay. Yeah, I can do individual too. Of course I do, right? But I just want to make it clear. I don't want to misrepresent. Right, okay. So, once again, no, once again, no, that's not the right thing, sorry. But naturally occurring, people have gifts or gifting and talents. And I recognize that is another talent of mine about physicality and the body mechanics and movement is something that came naturally with me. So I was, um, was self-taught in the probably 90s, reading the Gold's Gym Encyclopedia, right? And working on myself and transforming my body over time from probably 18 years onwards. And I used to train friends in, the, in my backyard and, and so on for free. And then I started to charge a little thing, but most times it was free because I was happy to do it. I love helping people, right? Service to man and service to God, right? So that was my passion, excitement and so on. And then over time, you did various jobs, things that wasn't your natural fit. You just went through the motions, low paying jobs, whatever, so, 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 so. And then you, you finally came um, for, for a blessing of being in the right place at the right time where I was hired part-time to get um, their training in a particular gym, very nice gym, upscale gym. And they hired me full-time after maybe doing a three-month probation period. I was working at a, a credit union before and whatever. And I just go from strength to strength. I got increases in salary within maybe a few months at a time. And they said, be quiet and stuff like that. But we think you are a real asset or whatever. So it was like that. So I realized, oh, gift sharing. So it was parallel helping people, but being unnatural and being open to learning and being certified and whatever. So that was the whole experience there. And um, I went to different gyms over the period. And that is another gifting that I have. and love helping people. So fire away. What would you like to find out in that capacity? All right. <laughs> Thanks. I'm really glad to hear that, um, you know, you're not only sharing in terms of, you know, um, the church life, but also, you know, in, in people with getting fit and so forth. So that's really, really um, a great aspect of your personality. Yeah. Um, what I want to find out, though, is that, you know, well, I'm a, I'm a teacher, so I sit a lot because I have to do a lot of planning. I do a lot of teaching. And, you know, some COVID weight has come on. Right. right. Um, what, and I'm, well, I'm in my forties. So, you know, it, I find, you know, weight is very easy to gain. So right. what is, what are some things that you think I could do to, you know, lose that, uh, COVID weight? Right. First of all, make up your mind. Right. So make up your mind, know your desire, have a plan and execute or sacrifice. So sacrifice, the sacrifice is not being lazy. Yeah. Give up being lazy, <laughs> right? So, 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 so I would tell you, don't make excuses because uh, 20 minutes of activity could constitute a, a workout. workout. A workout doesn't have to be long or painful. You have to be very smart or strategic about it. In terms of weight loss, it's all about eating, diet. Diet is not 
one dimensional. When people hear dietetic is something negative or something that you have to abstain from eating and whatnot. No, diet is just the way in which you eat, what you eat, right? That is what diet is, what composed of your regular eating only. So you can diet to, to gain weight or to lose weight. So specific, specifically in losing weight, you have to look at high fiber content and lean protein. So examples of fiber would be oats, right? Uh, fruits and vegetables. And those things have to be consumed regularly because fiber and in your body act as a strain or retainer from the excess waste of the food you eat in general. So it lines your intestines and, and when you do that, then you eat whatever you need to eat. And then what happens is that that acts as a scraper to scrape your intestinal walls. And this is why people will have regular bowel movements because of the high fiber content, right? right? right. Yeah. So I would say specifically, oat is king numero uno. It is a complete meal, which is a right mix of carbohydrates and fiber and protein, right? And you could spruce up the protein content by having some sort of milk of your choice, right? That's a complete meal. Um, also, water. Water between each meal and the first thing in the morning, and then your food, then your meal. If you just do those one, the, fat, the, the, the oats, you water the fruit. Once you add this to your daily regimen, you will see transformation over a period. And the first thing you will notice in that transformation, there's phases. You have a change of energy. Energy mm -hmm. level is different. Attitude is different. Posture is different. The second one is you will feel your clothes fitting differently. So you would lose inches. That points to losing inches. You lose water weight to excess water in your body. And then you'll have another phase where you lose fat, right? So it's a process. It's not a quick fix. Don't be fooled. Right. No matter what anybody says, the principle, the biology, the science remains the same. So it points to discipline, right? Right. I, I will stop there. I don't want to go overboard. Well, the advice is going so good. Uh, uh, but I have, two, I have two more questions. You know, the, sure. the whole thing about no bread. No uh -huh. flour, no rice, those kinds of things. If you want to lose weight, you just have to cut that out one time. Right? Talk to me about that. That can work. But you, when one wants to make a change in life, for it to be realistic and achievable, it has to be graduated. It cannot be radical. Because most people on this planet is not disciplined enough. To handle radical change, right? It has to be graduated, but it has to be graduated and consistent, right? right? Consistent, to, yes. Yeah, yeah, consistent for it to, to work, right? And um, that is the only way it's uh, achievable because if something is radical or drastic, everyone will be phased and demotivated. It has to be set in a way where it is achievable not intimidating and off-putting, right? So you have to graduate it, you understand? And you have to consult people who know. With the advent of the University of YouTube and Google and whatnot, yeah. I will yes. tell you, my friend, you cannot be fooled or be told by people who use Google and YouTube. You have people who are gifting. So, for example, a person like myself, who is gifted in fitness and nutrition, will see something from three dimensions. Not one, as the average folks on YouTube and Google. We will naturally be able to pinpoint and troubleshoot any area of wellness, fitness, etc. Right? So, you will see over time who is really knowledgeable in the area of fitness and who's not, right? So you have to consult those who are in the know, who is qualified, who has experience, right? Not YouTubers, not experienced exercise enthusiasts in the, 
enthusiastic kid ninja. No, those are not trainers. Keep that in mind. Yeah. All right. So if I I so I do essentially have to cut out rice and 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 bread immediately, but it's a gradual thing. So I could so instead of the two sandwiches that I have for breakfast, start cutting it down to one. Instead of the three spoons of rice I have, maybe cut it down to one and a half. That kind of gradual change, yes? Correct. And and you're looking at and more than one aspect. So you're looking at volume. You have to look at you have to look at timing of eating. And you have to look at what you're eating, right? It's not one dimensional. See, right. the same point I just made yes. is not <laughs> right. one dimensional. Yeah. Yes. Right? So you have yes. to change your com- so you have to change your complexion of yes. your food. Not everything white is right. You have to change that white rice. I am assuming. You have to change this that white, white rice. rice. Yes. Yeah, you yes. have to you have to change that as well. Right? Those things are not good. It is single sugars that is filling you up. You need yes. substance. You need complexity, complex carbohydrates. That's what you need to fill you up. It is dense, so it will occupy you even longer. So your stomach wouldn't be protruding to be filled because density or dense things pick up less space. Right. Got it? Yeah. Mm. Right. So. Yeah. So, right. I hear you with that one dimensional thing. Um, so I bought a jump rope, right? And I am wondering, is, is this sufficient? You know, when I look at my diet and I and I make the gradual changes to my diet and I use my jump rope, because I mean, I, I walk and that kind of thing, yes. I try to run in, but I've, I I run on the, the asphalt outside by me and I find it hurts my, my, my knees and my shins. So what do you think about a jump rope as a form of exercise and to assist with weight loss? Oh, jump rope is old school and is very effective. But, <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> but it is not what you do, it's how you do, right? Right. So you, yeah. have to look at, you have to look at footwear. Yes. And you have to look at self, what your issues are, if any. And then you have to make provisions for that. So footwear is one, and then surface. So you have to probably look at jumping on some form of rubber, a rubber surface or grass, or a trampoline. There's many ways you could use jump ropes still, right? And um, then you would be able to still um, take part in jump rope and safeguard your, your joints from injury. So it's footwear, and then it's surface you have to consider, right? But you don't have to give up jump rope altogether. And if you don't have access to a trampoline, grass, rubber, what you could do is a modified version of, for example, um, burpees. You know, not burpees? Yes. Or jumper jacks. So instead of having the explosive up and down and stuff like that, you could you could um, walk in and out with the burpees. Walk in and out, right? Walk in, step out. Walk in, mm-hmm. step out, right? And doing the jumping jacks, for example, yes. right? And jump in and out, jump in, in and out, right? And that will apply to with skipping, um, skipping, um, skipping. You could stay on your toes, light, light, light. But the, the, the footing have to be, um, have a certain cascade turning over regularly and lightly. So your 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 joints will not be impacted significantly. You'll be light on the foot. Feet, sorry. Yeah. Wow, that was good advice because I was just going to jump rope like how I grew up jumping rope. <laughs> That's right. so much advice. Nice. Right. Well, I hope that helps a lot. Big time. Yes, it does. It does. So our time is winding down, Homer. So I want to get to the usual question I ask. Yes. Um, yes. Yes. My, yes. Um, what is your favorite hymn and why? Wow. Once again, there's a lot of things that is not favorite with me because there's so much that I appreciate. But it will yes. have some things stick out at certain periods. Um, I think one of the one of my favorite hymns. I would say one of is in your hands. Good one. In your hands. That speaks to me a lot because I'm an overthinker. And it has a line that's saying, you know, I could um, place today, tomorrow, and things like that. That speaks to faith. So that speaks a lot to me. That is one of my favorite. One. <laughs> yeah, that's a good one. That's a really good one. Yeah. And that go to scripture of yours. What is that scripture that you go to? Right. 
Again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Bible does follow them, man. Eh? <laughs> yes, yes. This is why we keep speaking, and this is why I'll be excited because there's so much, so much feeding there. Yeah. Um, I would say Romans eight thirty one. If God is for me, who can be against me? That's one. Another one. Another one. Say, yeah, give another one. <laughs> that's say another one. If God is for me, who can be against me? So that's Romans eight thirty one. Another one that I like is Philippians 4.13, I believe, where it says, I can do all things to Christ, which can me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Look at right there. Oh, lovely. <laughs> right there. Yeah. Wow. Excellent. Yeah. Those are two of like, some of my favorites there, definitely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. For sure. Good ones. Very, very good ones. Thank all you. right, Homer. So this has been really, really good. Um, as I said, you know, the way you speak about your love for God is really, really inspiring. But I mean, one of the issues that we have in our church is that not many men are there, right? Yes. What yes. would you say to, to, you know, any men viewing, you know, and, you know, kind of apprehensive about going to church or nonchalant about going to church? What, what would you say to them? I would simply say to them, open up your mind and your heart and you can start with your either your partner or your significant other and use that same willingness to get together with your partner in a, a rum shop or whatever to talk about whatever you could come together with the same alcohol if you wish that's your choice and speak about how god has helped you that is a great start starting point that is like everyday situation you don't need to be in a specific space, space to do that. We're just conditioned to do a lot of things. And when you speak openly and freely, truly, how God has blessed you day to day, in simple ways, you don't have to be anything um, extravagant, that will set the ball rolling. And then what will happen over time, you will tell us, find yourself uh, quoting a scripture that was taught to you as a child or a teenager, or hearing your grandmother or somebody speaking to you, and that's how it comes together. Once you open up your mind that can speak freely, it will just open up you, open you up automatically and naturally. But the first thing is the first step, which is the hardest thing. After that, is sealing from there. Understand? So I would say speak freely and openly about God, because at the end of the day, gentlemen, we have to give account to ourselves, and we have to seek approval from God, not man. Because at the end of our life, we have got to answer. And to me, if that doesn't sober you up and put your priority straight, then I don't know what else would be. Then I have no idea. Right. So start talking, have simple conversations about God, just highlight yes. the goodness of God. And from yes. there, it could snowball into, you know, groups gathering, to, men gathering together, or, you know, people gathering together, talking about God. And then eventually, you know, it could go into, you yes. Know, yes. You could you could start and pardon me. You could start as as simple or easy as in the household. That's easy. That's your family there. They're not going to divorce you, right? Then you have your friends, and then you have a workspace. Be unapologetic about thanking God for whatever blessings or deliverance you may have and stuff like that that you did not necessarily ex uh, uh, expect. You know, once you do that. You, people people would give you you do respect in this time yeah for sure yeah wow thank yeah, you so much for sharing that sorry i said just step out in feet that's all yeah yeah for real yeah, yeah step out in feet and you know you wouldn't be disappointed for sure no you will not no way <laughs> thank you so much i really enjoyed this conversation homer um yes. it really it really was good and i learned a lot um, and again, I want to wish you all the best in, in your ministries, wherever they are. I know you don't like that formal, you know, kind of <laughs> <laughs> ministry or whatever yes, yes. ministries you find yourself in. I really wish you all of God's blessings um, and continue to grow um, in your faith. It's really admirable, really, really admirable. And I hope that, you know, what you said would resonate with at least one person um, to continue on their journey. Wow. Well, thank you very much, um, Ayana, and actually the ICT team and stuff like that. You're doing an excellent um, job in your uh, generation. God bless your work. 
and you know look forward to interacting with you on any platform any given day thanks for having me thank you so much and to everyone watching out there remember your three w's wear your mask wash your hand and watch your distance bye everyone amen okay bye god blessings thank you bye.